In this tutorial, we will be describing the chemical properties of monosaccharides. Specifically, we'll be looking at oxidation reduction. Alright, so you might remember that glucose is an aldehyde. You may also remember us going into great lengths to discuss the oxidation reduction of such chemicals. Remember that oxidation is when you're adding bonds to, oxi to oxygen, so it goes from a hydrogen to an OH group. Whereas reduction is when you're taking away bonds to oxygen. So if we're looking at this, glucose is an aldehyde. In order for it to be oxidized, you have to have a hydrogen there to sacrifice. Well, aldehydes do. So that means when you do, let's say, a Benedict solutions test, you can actually oxidize these aldos because of the fact that you can insert an oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen and make an OH group. These are then producing sugar acids. If we look back here again, there's an OH group here. That hydrogen can easily be removed, which is making it an acid. Because by definition, an acid is something that donates hydrogen. Well, if they end up popping this hydrogen off, then that hydrogen can be donated and thus making it an acid. And that's giving it the ending of onic acid. So let's look at fructose. Fructose is a ketone. Ketones, you may remember, have the oxygen in the middle. Because that carbonyl group is in the middle there and there's no hydrogen to sacrifice, typically it's not, not typically, it will not oxidize because of the fact that there's no hydrogens there. So what happens instead, it, it's really weird, but actually it's called a rearrangement. The carbon oxygen double bond here and that first carbon end up switching places. So this, this oxygen absorbs that hydrogen and it forms a double bond up here. And now that it has a hydrogen sacrifice, now it can be oxidized. The reduction of the carbonyl group in monosaccharides produces sugar alcohols. These sugar alcohols are what is used for sugar-free drinks or gum. So this is the sugar substitute that they use. So for instance, this reduction converts glucose to sorbitol. And that sorbitol is then the sugar that they use in gum. So the ITOL ending is showing you that it's, that it's this compound that has then been reduced. So here's glucose. It's been reduced. And how do we know it's been reduced? by the fact that it's missing a bond to that oxygen. One of those bonds got broken and is now an OH group. All right, so what is the product of the reduction of mannose? So reduction means that you're removing bonds to oxygen. So one of these bonds to the oxygen is gonna break and it's gonna form an OH here with another H coming off. So here it is. This is what it was at the beginning. Now we have an OH group and two hydrogens coming off rather than just one hydrogen coming off. And that's how you reduce it to make it into a reducing uh, an alcohol, a sugar alcohol.